Welcome back. In this video, let's take a look at the first type of modules, which is local modules. Local modules are modules that we create and use in our application. At the moment, we have index.js with hello from index.js logged to the terminal. In the same file, I'm going to add a function to find the sum of two numbers. This is an arrow function. We specify two parameters, a comma b, and return their sum. In the next line, we call the function with one and two as arguments and assign the return value to the sum constant. Finally, I'm going to log to the console the constant sum. If we now save the file and run node index.js, we should see hello from index.js and three being logged. Although this works fine, it's always good to split your JavaScript programs into separate modules that can be imported when needed. That allows you to easily manage the code as your application grows. So let's now learn how to create a separate module for the add function. In the same Node.js folder, I'm going to create a new file called add.js. And this file represents our first module. I'm going to cut the add function code and paste it in add.js, including the assignment to the sum variable and the console log statement. If we now save both the files and run node index, You can see we have just hello from index.js. We don't see the log statement from add.js. And this is the first point to keep in mind about modules. In Node.js, each file is a module, but is isolated by default. I can even add an incorrect JavaScript statement, but still be able to run index.js. So the question is, how do we ask Node to execute not just index.js, but also add.js? Well, this is where the CommonJS module format comes into picture. CommonJS is a standard that states how a module should be structured and shared. Node.js adopted CommonJS when it started out and is what you will see in code bases. Let's understand how it works. To include the add module into index.js, we need to use a function that is always available in Node, and that is the require function. Let's call it at the top. To this function, we pass in the path to the module as a string. So it quotes, single or double based on your preference, and the path is dot slash add dot js. Here, dot slash refers to the same folder as index.js, and add.js is the file name of our first module. If we now save the file and rerun the code, node index, you can see three followed by hello from index.js. So what is happening here is the require function loads the add module into index.js. The code in add.js gets executed by the V8 engine and the output is logged in the terminal, three. Once add.js module code has been executed, the remaining code in index.js is executed, which logs hello from index.js to the terminal. We can verify this by running in debug mode. On the first line in index.js, place a breakpoint by clicking on the line number. You should see a red dot. Now, instead of running node in the terminal, we click on the debug and run icon in the sidebar. Here, click on run and debug button. 
and select Node.js. This starts the program in debug mode. I can click on step into, and you can see the require function, which was our first line in index.js, brings us to add.js. We can step over, and we see three logged in the debug console. Step over again, and the execution is back in index.js. Step over again, and we see the message, hello from index.js, being logged. This is how the control flows with modules. The last point I would like to highlight in this video is that you don't have to specify .js as the file extension when requiring JavaScript files. If you choose to leave out the extension, Node will automatically append .js and try load the module. So if we were to rerun node index, we still see the same output. Ignoring .js file extension is pretty common and I will be doing the same in the rest of the series. To summarize, in node.js, each file is a module that is isolated by default. To load a module into another file, we use the require function. When index.js is executed, the code in the module is also executed. If the file we are requiring is a JavaScript file, we can skip specifying the extension and Node.js will infer it on our behalf. Now, although we are able to load and execute a module, what would be better is if we could expose certain functionality from the module while keeping the rest private. That would allow us to share only the necessary code between modules. Let's see how to do that in the next video.